Hi and welcome to another video of IIT Jam Biological Science and Biotechnology Question Reviews. Today's topic is Cell Signaling. After detailed analysis of previous year questions, I came to a conclusion with the detailed statistics how many questions are asked from cell biology section and here is the result. So on an average, every year roughly 5 questions are being asked in from this topic and among that roughly two or one questions every year is from cell signaling topic the topic is easy a high yield topic so here are some question solution from those topic before we start I want to let you know that all the relevant cell signaling concepts that you need to know for solving these questions are available in my channel so go and check my cell signaling playlist and the link is given in the end screen so here is the first question which is from IIT Jam Biotechnology 2018 and this question says which of the following statement is correct for G protein coupled receptor signaling now GPCRs contain 7 transmembrane spanning region definitely it's true second is GPCR are linked with heterotrimeric G protein consisting alpha beta and gamma subunit definitely it is true in absence of GPCR in absence of GPCR interacting ligand, alpha subunit of G protein is bound to GTP and complexed with beta gamma subunit. So it is not true. I would explain this concept in a moment. In presence of GPCR interacting ligand, GTP is displayed from uh, displaced from alpha subunit of G protein by GDP, and GDP bound to alpha subunit dissociate from beta gamma dimer and activates an effector so the correct answers are a and b and c and d are not true i would show why they are not true so here is an overview of g protein signaling screen so you can see when the ligand binds to the g protein coupled receptor which is a seven transmembrane domain receptor g alpha subunit is getting activated and its GTP, GDP, guanosine diphosphate is replaced by GTP and which is activating adenylate cyclase and thus the further signaling is happen. So in an inactive form, G alpha subunit is bound with GDP. So it's kind of a switch which is off in that, that state. Upon ligand binding, guanosine ex nucleotide exchange factors or GIF actually help G alpha subunit to get converted to GTP bound conformation which is an active conformation or on conformation like thing and that is reversible by the action of GTP as activated proteins or caps. Upon the same concept another question was asked in IIT Jam 2014. So the binding of hormone to its receptor activates adenylate cyclase through a stimulatory G protein signaling if due to a mutation the G protein binds due, uh, the G protein binds but does not hydrolyze GTP the consequence would be and the consequence is easy adenylate cyclase would be constitutively activated and this question has a little bit twist towards a disease side I would discuss so normally what happens is when a ligand bind the G alpha GTP subunit gets activated and it translocate along the membrane to activate adenylate cyclase and the adenylate cyclase converts ATP to cyclic AMP so there are few toxins cholera toxins who actually modifies the G alpha subunit by ADP ribosylation and thereby locks it lock it into a constitutively active state or constantly on state so this question says though it doesn't requires a disease angle but it says what happens if the G alpha subunit is locked in a GTP state so if the G alpha subunit is locked in a GTP state then there would be lot of cyclic AMP produced from the uh, ATP because adenylate cyclase is constitutively active in this situation and so the next question is which of the following are characteristics of receptor level, uh, receptors for soluble hormones they have a kinase domain, they function as a homodimer or heterodimer, they are mostly located on cytoplasm or nucleus, they are transcription factor. 
so the correct options are b c and d and here is the concept behind it so roughly the nuclear uh, receptors are having several domains known as a and b domain which has the transcription activation function c domain is the dna binding and e domain is the ligand binding and also it has a transcription activation function second two and f domain is the cytosolic so it doesn't have a kinase domain definitely so the that option is not correct so it could be either present in the cytosol and when the ligand binds it translocates to nucleus in case of steroid hormones this phenomena is most common or it could be the receptors are heterodimerizing in the nucleus and they are bound to the gene itself waiting for the soluble uh, hormone to be there so that kind of situation is true for thyroid hormones so they could be either nuclear or they could be cytosolic and they could be also homodimer or heterodimer so second next question is apoptosis is controlled by uh, it's a controlled cell death process uh, and that process in, involves exposure of phosphatidyl serine on the outer surface of the cell membrane, decreased permeability of the mitochondrial membrane, increased lysosomal activity, internucleosomal, internucleosomal cleavage of the genomic DNA. So the correct options are this one and also this one is false. Increased lysosomal activity is a another correct option and so internucleosomal uh, cleavage of the genomic DNA is correct so apart from B all the options are correct and though it's kind of little bit deviated from this topic so I would discuss about its concept in some later videos now here another video says another uh, question says that the intracellular messenger formed by the activation of phosphate inositide cascade are so the correct option is inositol 1,4,5-trisphosphate and diacylglycerol, basically IP3 and DAG. Same question is again repeated in 2018. So which says which of the following statements are true about phosphoinositide signaling cascade? And the correct options are generation of IP3 is uh, gen uh, generation of IP3 transiently increases the calcium concentration and calcium 2 plus facilitate the activation of protein kinase C. So here is uh, and another question is also on the same topic. The cellular organelle which functions as a store of calcium is it would be endoplasmic reticulum. So all these things is covered in this concept. So in case of GQ signaling, G alpha Q of upon uh, ligand binding, G alpha Q dissociates and it's activate phospholipase C. Phospholipase C cleaves the IP3 and whatever is re left is DAG. So here is the concept. So PIP2 is actually a membrane bound lipid. Phospholipase C can cleave that, leave DAG hanging on the membrane and release IP3. Once IP3 is released, it, it is bound to the store operated calcium channel on the endoplasmic reticulum. And it allows the endoplasmic reticulum to like extrude calcium from endoplasmic reticulum and thereby cytosolic calcium increases from and it comes from the endoplasmic reticulum and also what happens when calcium goes out it actually activates protein kinase C which further activates several downstream effectors another question says the preferred ligand for SH2 domain is uh, serine phosphor related peptide or tyrosine phosphorylated peptide glucose 6 phosphate or cyclic AMP so the answer is tyrosine phosphorylated peptide so let me discuss what is SH2 domain and where it is found so SH2 domain is related to MAP kinase signaling or other growth factor signaling and several proteins has this SH2 domain one example is adapter proteins which bind to phosphotyrosine residue so these adapter proteins here the GRB2 has SH2 domain and it binds to the phosphotyrosine residue of the phosphorylated receptor tyrosine kinase. So uh, a GRB2 or many other protein, many other kinases has this SH2 domain which can bind to 
several phosphotyrosine residue and here is a 3D structure of that. You can understand that in the pocket of uh, this GRB2 phosphoserine residue is inserted. So it binds to the phosphoserine residue. And here is the few list of some transcription factors, some adapters, some enzymes which has uh, SH2 domain and also a similar domain is SH3 domain. So if you like my videos, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Thank you.